and hello again and here we are back in my drive on quite a cold wet day but we'll do our best with the mark ii project and although it is getting colder and wetter now so i can't work so much out here on the drive so progress is slowing down but we are still making progress so recently i fitted these uh, rng bar ends to the bike i was quite impressed with the quality of them so i bought myself some rng paddock reels for the swing arm here and they work really well only cost about 25 pounds so i'm quite impressed with that next thing that's happened recently is that i've got the rebuilt cylinder head back from camcoat which has been given a very high-tech finish which helps with the heat dispersant so that head's now gone to my friend's workshop let a workshop where he's going to rebuild the head and then put the head on the engine and hopefully that's it for the engine the engine can then go in the bike but that creates a problem for me because I have no way of getting the bike from here to his workshop. I don't have a van, I don't have access to a van at the moment. It's a bit of a problem. So I've used Google Maps. It turns out his workshop is 1.83 miles from here. So my only option really is to push this bike from here to his workshop. So 1.83 miles isn't too bad on a level ground. But unfortunately, there are two quite big bridges between me and him, and those bridges have some quite steep inclines. So I'm not sure how I'm going to go on pushing this bike all that way. Now, obviously, it's a lot easier to push without an engine in it than it would be as a complete bike. But even so, this thing weighs over 200 pounds, so I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get on. But only one way to find out. So in the next few days, I'm going to try and push this bike one dry morning from here all that way to his workshop. And hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll make it. So the next thing that's happened is I finally got something I've been trying to get hold of since June. It's now late November. And that is these Tarosi rear sets for the bike. Now, I first ordered them, I think it was back in June, from a UK supplier. And it should have been about a 30 day lead time. After 30 days, nothing. After 60 days, nothing. So I emailed the guy, I said, look, what's going on? He says, oh, well, it's now August and Italy are on holiday. But as soon as we get back in September, I'll get hold of this part for you and get it sent off straight away. Okay, fine. And September came, nothing. October, nothing. So in the end, I gave up with that idea. Turns out I can order these parts direct from Italy, which I did. And it's even cheaper than buying it from a UK supplier, so that's really good. So I ordered them and it came within two weeks, so I'm pretty happy with that. I can't quite fit them yet though, because I'm lacking the special um, bolts which go through the frame here to fit them. So I've ordered those along with the appropriate uh, rubbers from Z Power, and they should be here any day so I can get these parts on the bike at last. So once the rear sets are on and the engines in the bike and I've got the various little bits and bobs done I'm almost finished with the bike except for one quite big component which is the exhaust system now the exhaust systems have been giving me a real headache because any exhaust system I buy for this bike that was made to fit this bike won't fit my bike because of course it's got a much wider than standard back end it's got a ZRX swing arm a 180 rear tyre, a 5.5 inch rim from an R6, so completely non-standard. Now I got around that problem with my 1170 project by buying a Delcovic system and then modifying the 4 one collector, making it longer so it will clear the swing arm. I also actually changed the angle of the sounds as well at the same time. But I wanted something a bit different for this bike, so I've been looking around and there are some nice systems from the likes of Vance and Hines, Marvin and so on, but they're all chromed, so they're only modifying and uh, cutting up a chrome system is a really bad idea because then you've got to get the parts you've cut re-chromed, which will take forever and cost a fortune, so I don't want to do that. So I've been pondering what to do and I found a system, a full titanium system, made by a UK company, it's not too far away from me, in Derbyshire, called Racefit. It's quite a well-known company, very high spec and very expensive, but they do make really nice systems. So I've contacted them saying, hey, you know, do you do one for my bike? Because I, I think they make systems for these old Suzuki's and Kawasaki's like mine. I said, yeah, we do. Slight problem is you have to have the bike at their workshop in Derbyshire so they can make it to fit your bike perfectly. 
which is no use to me because I don't have I don't have transport but it's something I might do in the future when I can get the bike to them only slight problem is of course titanium systems are very expensive and their system for my bike is 1800 pounds which is you know getting on for a bit that said if I bought a similar system all the way from Japan by the likes of Nitro which are really nice systems by the way by the time you import it into the UK it's well over two and a half thousand pounds so that's again a ridiculous amount of money which I'm not prepared to spend I mean imagine spending all that money and then just having the bike fall over one day and smashing up your brand new titanium system so that's not uh, a good idea yeah so I think my fallback position then is going to be to buy another Delkovic system but this time a polished stainless steel system rather than a, a black strongly finished system and that way I can cut it up to my heart's content because stainless steel you can cut it re-weld it re-polish it and you'll never know it's been modified so that's what I think I might do now if at the end of all that work I don't like the result it's not the end of the world because the systems are quite cheap they're about 350 pounds so I could always use that system for a while and then go off and find a better system maybe one from race fit maybe one from Japan who knows but yeah I've got some interesting ideas for the Delkovic I think I might uh, chop it up quite a lot and uh, we'll see how I like the results I may even just use the four into one part of the bike the downpipes and the collector and then make my own uh, silencer something like that anyway but we'll see about that that's something for the future yeah so things are happening with the bike and so we'll continue the video hopefully with the bike at Liz's workshop and me not in a big pile on the floor panting away exhausted but we'll see about that I'm not sure how I'm gonna get on pushing this bike almost two miles uphill and down dale but I guess there's only one way to find out However, before I pushed the bike 1.82 miles, a parcel just arrived from Zeb Power. And in amongst the useful parts in that box were these. These are the special studs for mounting the foot pegs to the bike. And that means I can now use those to mount my new Trossi rear sets. And so let's do that and see how it looks on the bike. Okay, so here on the bike, you can see the two mounts for the foot pegs. Now these holes have a step in them halfway through I think you can tell from the camera and in that narrow section it's threaded so all I've got to do is thread these into that narrow section I put some Loctite on the uh, thread as well only problem I found is that because it's just smooth you can't really do it up I'm trying to get that tight and I couldn't so I put two um, little lock nuts on here to help me tighten it up I think actually Mr Kawasaki should have put a flat two flats on this smooth bit to help you tighten it up but never mind never mind here we are so let's uh, get that tight now and then obviously the uh, shoulder of this special stud will hit the shoulder inside the hole and we're done there's also enough thread sticking through so if needed you can put a little lock nut on the inside which I'll do I think also got it nice and tight bit of belt and braces but you don't want your foot peg falling off I guess right okay that's fine so with that lock nut on there I can now hopefully just undo these nuts here here we go and that's one done so now we'll do the other one and then I can fit the rear sets and so with the studs in place it's time to try out my new trusted rear sets only problem is they don't fit so I'll have a look turns out that um, these studs of course are M12 they're 12 mil and the holes in the rear sets are 11.9 mil so they won't go on they won't go on also interesting is that uh, on a standard bike these studs also use a rubber grommet between the stud and the actual foot peg but I guess the trotted rear sets don't need that or don't want that so yeah a bit of a problem so what I've got to do now is take out these holes by a tenth of a millimeter very carefully so they'll fit on the bike it's never easy it's never easy right so this drill bit is just over 12 millimeters it should hopefully open up these holes just enough let's see So now, with those holes widened slightly, the bracket will now fit on the bike, thank God. 
Before it goes on though, I've got these two spacers I need to use, which came with the kit from Tarosi, like that. And then the bracket goes on like that. Now, the kit does come with an awful lot of extra parts, some of which I won't be using on the bike. So here I have got a chrome part here, quite a complicated part, and that goes with the rear brake setup. And that's used so you can continue to use the original mass cylinder, which is lives behind, normally lives behind the side panel. But I won't be using that because I want to use a modern light small Brembo mass cylinder, and I'll make a mount for it off here so it positions the mass cylinder on the outside of the side panel, round about here, round about here. So therefore, there's quite a lot of parts on here that I don't need. There's also, of course, a few parts I've got to make, such as the bracket to hold the mass cylinder in place, and that shouldn't really be a problem. Now, if you look at this, by having a mass cylinder here, this, this lever here with the hole in it is in the wrong place. It needs to be sort of there rather than there. But the good news is I can take this apart and move this lever back wherever I like. So that's not really a problem. So now what I've got to do is make a bracket, or make a template for a bracket to mount the, uh, the gold Brembo mass cylinder I've got for the bike. And so here's the Mark II version of my cardboard template. Let's just see how that looks now. Put him on there like that. You have to imagine that that lever is kind of here. So we'll get the Brembo here and try it out. A bit difficult to do when I'm filming at the same time, but you can imagine that's there. Now that looks a bit close to me because I had to imagine how far that would be over there. Is that enough? Is that enough? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, the push rod I use will be made by me, so I can make it as long or short as I like. As long as it doesn't uh, get too close to the piston, we're okay. So yeah, I think that might work quite well. Is the angle right though? It's a bit difficult to tell because I've got to hold it and then imagine where that lever is going to be in use. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. If I do it like that, that's there. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Right, so now let's try and turn this into an aluminium bracket. And so, if you recall, the Tarosi brackets need to have a 6mm spacer behind them when they go on the bike. So I could do with making my bracket from 6mm plate. As it turns out, I've got some plate here, some nice new plate, but it's 5mm, but I think 1mm won't make a difference. So I've got this beautiful brand new piece of plate here. Now this is what it, whatever it is, it's uh, oh, 9 by 14 inches. Not sure why I bought it, but anyway. Um, costs about 10 pounds. So I'm gonna cut out a little part there. It's about a pound's worth of aluminium, so you shouldn't worry about uh, the cost of these aluminium plates. It's not that expensive. That said, I'm sure if Jeff is watching this right now, he's going, no, no, don't cut up a nice new plate. I'd find an offcut for you, but you know, I bought these to use, not, not just to keep in a corner somewhere, never to be touched. So yeah, we'll make a start now, and we'll cut out the shape I need, drill it, file it, and hopefully it'll look okay on the bike. And so I've just very roughly drawn out the shape I need. But before I hacksaw it out, it's much easier, much better to drill the important holes in this thing before I cut it out. That Because it makes it easier to hold, makes it easier to uh, handle. So I've got the Tarosi rear set bracket here. So I'll plunk him where it needs to be. And I'll use this as a guide so I can mark the exact center of these holes. And to do that, I've got a drill bit almost the same size as the hole all I've got to do is drop it in there hold it steady and just tap it lightly with a hammer because all I'm trying to do is mark it I don't want to do anything else just mark it gently so hopefully that's worked let's have a look yeah I'm not sure you can tell in the camera but I've got two little marks now that's my guide to where I need to drill a hole in this aluminium plate There we go. Now it would be easier if I had a drill press here at home, but I don't have one, no space for one. So I'm just doing the best I can. And I start off with a very small drill bit and then slowly work my way up to the correct size. That's the way I do things. You don't want to be jumping in and using a massive big drill bit on your first pass. That's uh, not a good idea. 
There we go. So next, I should really make the holes for this thing, but I'm not quite sure yet the precise place it should go. So I'm just not sure if I should, if I should start drilling. So I might just leave that for the time being. So in the meantime, I'll just cut out the shape with a hacksaw, hand file, get hot and sweaty doing it, but at least it warms you up on a cold day. Yes. Well, it's a start. Phew. And now here we are, it's the next morning, and I'm making good progress with this bracket. So I've got a board using my hand file, so I've now moved on to using my Dremel with a little abrasive drum here, and that works really well, particularly on the curves. And now let's do a quick test fit to see how things are looking. Not looking too bad at the moment. So the Brembo, my cylinder will have to go something like that on the bracket. However, before I commit to drilling the bracket to mount my Brembo mass cylinder, I want to fit it with either a rose joint or a clevis pin. To do that, I've dug out an old stainless steel cap head bolt of the correct size. So what we'll do now is cut off the end and round it off and that end will go into the mass cylinder and this end can go into the appropriate either the rose joint or the clevis pin whichever I decide I prefer something like this so it goes in there like that and there you go and so now I've drilled two 5mm holes in my bracket and now I'm just tapping them out to M6 so there you go and so now as you can see i've got the bracket painted i used etch primer followed by so-called tough paint in satin black now if in use that paint doesn't last too long it's not a big problem i'll just take it off one day and get it to hard and a nice black so next thing then i need to adjust this lever here to move that further round i can't do that yet because it's so stiff i can't get it undone without maybe damaging it so just making me a little tool to help me take this lever apart and then we can adjust this and get it just right the spaces i've used behind the brembo master cylinder aren't quite right yet i only had 10 mil i found in a box but i need about 14 mil to get everything lined up just right so that's fine i'm not a big fan of these acorn nuts here which i've used in stainless steel but that's the look that the old Kawasaki Zs use, so that's what I've gone for. So anyway, with that done, I can now work out the root and the length I need for the rear brake line. I guess it's going to have to come sort of down here behind the frame and then come round here to the master cylinder. I've also, of course, got to find a mounting for the reservoir, and that will be probably behind the side panel. That's not really a big problem. I'll just run it alongside the the brake line and then in behind here there's plenty of space behind there right yes yeah, so that's fine and uh, yeah it's a pity i can't take this damn thing apart yet and get it just right but never mind so i think that's it for this week because that damn bracket's taking me such a long time to make but we got there in the end so anyway thanks for watching and cheers <laughs>